order uh, uh, what you want, you will decide. Uh, let's see, maybe uh, this can do a couple of them. And uh, as you know, the system of senses it can disappear. Nobody will mind. Uh, the uh, lectures will be uh, given primarily by uh, myself and uh, by uh, Professor Anderson, uh, who uh, uh, will soon arrive and uh, will uh, give complimentary lectures uh, to uh, what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to, uh, to talk about uh, the uh, general principles involved in uh, uh, catalysis. And uh, I think this is a, a, a good uh, topic to talk about today. Can you uh, focus on uh, on this uh, book, which is on the uh, right? Uh, this is a, a report, and I shall uh, make make it available to you. And the uh, report was uh, written by uh, a uh, panel. Uh, of the uh, National Research Council, which is the umbrella organization, including the National Academy of Sciences of the US, National Academy of Engineering, and the uh, Institute of Medicine. Uh, the uh, uh, important mission of, uh, of the National Research Council is to uh, uh, commission uh, such studies, reports, that are of interest to uh, uh, the nation and uh, that bear on uh, science and technology. And uh, the uh, 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 message uh, on uh, the uh, front uh, here, thank you, uh, is uh, the title is Catalysis Looks to the Future and uh, the symbolism uh, is uh, the plume coming from uh, stacks of a power plant, uh, which uh, and the the exhaust is full of uh, nitric oxide, nitric oxide, and uh, this is an artist's <coughs> uh, simplified rendition of what happens to nitric oxide when it hits uh, a uh, uh, catalyst surface. It, uh, the uh, nitric oxide molecule decomposes into fragments. The fragments recombine uh, to uh, provide uh, uh, harmless dinitrogen and dioxygen. Uh, it is one of the uh, uh, applications of uh, catalysis uh, that bear on the uh, protection of the environment, and this shall uh, be emphasized considerably uh, in these lectures. That is the applications of catalysis to the uh, protection of the environment. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we shall uh, emphasize the, uh, the, the principles so that uh, uh, it's not something, a message that is for tomorrow, but uh, hopefully for uh, the next 25 years. Uh, principles of, uh, of catalysis.
hypostasis. But uh, I think that uh, uh, it motivates anyone to know that uh, we need uh, catalytic technologies today uh, for uh, the protection of the environment, and there are many applications coming. Uh, and some of them are covered in this, uh, in this report. Uh, there was a third lecturer uh, who uh, uh, had accepted to uh, take essentially one third of the lectures. Uh, his, uh, his name is uh, uh, John Sinfeld. And uh, he is with uh, uh, Exxon. Uh, and we shall use his book uh, during the lectures I shall give uh, to uh, cover an important message that uh, he conveys in this book, which is called uh, the Bimetallic uh, Catalyst, which uh, is one of the texts required. And uh, so John was going to be here. Unfortunately, he uh, uh, cannot make it. And that became clear only about a month ago when we had made our plans. And uh, the plans included uh, my uh, being away uh, next week at the uh, American Chemical Society meeting in uh, San Francisco. I am in charge of a full day session on Monday. I'm, uh, giving a talk on Friday morning. So uh, we will have two uh, uh, special lectures uh, next week, on Monday and on Friday. On, on, uh, on Friday, the uh, lecture will be given by uh, uh, Dr. Kusumano. From uh, uh, Catalytica Research company in the field of catalysis nearby. And uh, uh, the uh, topic will be uh, a summary of these applications of uh, catalysis for the protection of the environment. Uh, I have some uh, uh, indications here on uh, which I just received. Uh, This is the schedule of lectures, uh, required textbooks, the textbooks on reserve, and uh, there should be a copy for everyone here. Uh, I want to introduce uh, the uh, teaching assistant, uh, Diana Durieux. Uh, we should uh, stand at least for the benefit of the class. Right. Would you please pass it, pass it uh, uh, around, please? Uh, Diana is a uh, graduate student in uh, the civil engineering department, and uh, she is uh, a research scientist at uh, Catalytica uh, in Mountain View. OK. Let's get started, and let's uh, plunge into the uh, subject uh, by uh, defining a, a catalyst. A, any catalyst. Before I uh, attempt to do that, I would like to ask uh, any, uh, anybody in the room or outside to uh, volunteer a, a definition of a, of a catalyst. Uh, 
familiar to uh, him or her. Uh, so if you uh, uh, want to, uh, when you are ready, uh, grab the microphone, which is uh, at your desk, and uh, try the definition whom you learn, whom you heard, whom you believe in, uh, and we shall work it out from there. Any uh, volunteer? What's a catalyst? Now, you know, you know all what it is, because uh, uh, if you drive an automobile, you know that you have one uh, underneath uh, your car. So everybody knows what it is. Uh, uh, perhaps. <laughs> you must know. Right. Well, but that's unfair. <laughs> the, uh, a, a catalyst is something that uh, that uh, gives you a, a, a decent living today, right? Okay. Yeah. Right. right. But uh, uh, I would like a, a, a definition that you remember uh, from uh, high school, undergraduate uh, um, course in uh, chemistry, in whatever chemistry. Sure, you have heard it. What what a catalyst is? It is. Hmm. Nobody is grabbing uh, any microphone. Um, okay, here is a. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, catalyst lowers the activation air energy for a chemical reaction without actually becoming consumed in the reaction itself. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, the. Uh, uh, the first uh, part we shall make more precise. Uh, this is uh, uh, something that, uh, that people say very frequently. Uh, it's a substance that lowers the activation energy for a given chemical reaction. Uh, the second part of, uh, of uh, your definition is uh, the uh, usual one. Uh, it is a substance that uh, uh, participates uh, in the reaction without being consumed. Uh, this uh, is the uh, definition most, most people uh, know. And of course, it immediately uh, uh, surrounds the field of catalysis with mystery. What is this substance that is not consumed and that participates? How does this happen? So these definitions are actually are not really operational. They don't tell you. Uh, uh, much. So let's let's uh, 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 introduce this uh, series of lectures with uh, an attempt at defining a, a catalyst, any catalyst. So a, a catalyst substance. Okay. Uh, can be uh, an atom. Here is a tungsten atom. But it's unlikely that uh, uh, an atom would, like tungsten would be comfortable anywhere. Uh, it will uh, grab something, and it must be uh, stabilized to function as a catalyst if it is going to be a catalyst for a reaction. Uh, so uh, now we are going to create the uh, catalytic entity, the catalytic substance. And we are going to do this by uh, uh, adding some ligands uh, uh, to the tungsten. And uh, these uh, ligands are uh, uh, oxygen, and uh, they are a C, uh, H2, carbene group. And uh, what else? Uh, oh, yes, a, a Lewis base, LB. That's Lewis base. And uh, uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it. Two chlorine atoms, one oxygen uh, uh, atom, a carbene group, and a Lewis base. Uh, that stabilizes the uh, tungsten uh, atom, which is the central 
part of this catalytic entity. And uh, the uh, various ligands uh, have a definite chemical function to uh, provide tungsten in its correct oxidation state. Uh, the role of these uh, ligands, ligands is chemistry, and uh, we shall not really uh, be uh, dealing uh, much at all with chemistry in this uh, particular series of lectures. Uh, we shall try to understand how a catalyst, this one, is working. Um, working for what? All right, and here I think we are already coming to the, uh, the first part of the definition that was just uh, given a moment ago. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, reaction that we are interested in will be uh, a reaction between this uh, alkene, uh, olefin, ethylene, and this one. Now, th this other olefin is uh, uh, as carbons that are uh, uh, tagged. Uh, let us say that this is carbon uh, 13. And the reaction that we are uh, interested in is the uh, so-called dismutation or disproportionation of olefins uh, to give two molecules of this product. So uh, what happens then is that uh, the, uh, the first, uh, first uh, olefin, okay, uh, and the second one uh, get near to each other, and the carbon switch partners. Right? That's what happens. Well, uh, you can probably uh, wait uh, a few uh, uh, light years, and you will not find this to happen. There is just no path uh, to for this to happen. And in fact, uh, if this reaction were going to take place, uh, the way I indicated by the just switching partners, the activation energy, the energy uh, so man for the reaction to take place would be prohib prohibitively, prohibitively high, uh, high, so it doesn't take place. You could heat uh, uh, these reactants to uh, any temperature you wish. Uh, I think that the uh, ethylene would polymerize quite nicely, uh, but you would not get the product you want. So actually, uh, what we want is a catalyst to do that. And the catalyst is not really <laughs> lowering the activation energy. Maybe it is, but the, the, fa the, 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 the fact is that there is no path. And so the, the, the uh, catalyst provides a path for the reaction to take place at reasonable temperatures and uh, with uh, uh, reasonable yields. All right. Uh, If we go back to uh, the candles that we are going to use to carry out this, uh, okay, uh, this proportionation of olefins, or alkenes, a rather recent uh, catalytic uh, process that uh, is highly developed today. Uh, we need uh, actually a, a catalyst, this entity here, which contains a carbene, which you recognize to be half of the uh, molecule here that has to be uh, transformed. Uh, now, if you uh, 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 order a catalyst from a catalyst manufacturer, uh, for a reaction like this, it's not going to uh, get to you in this form. Because actually, uh, the 
catalyst you buy, the catalyst you put in your reactor, is not really the catalyst. It, it is a catalytic material. It's a precursor of the catalytic entity that will actually uh, uh, catalyze your reaction. I have written here the catalyst. It's ready to go. But what uh, uh, you receive does not contain the carbene. The carbene is formed as you contact the catalytic material that you buy uh, with the reactants. And that's a, a very, uh, very important point. Uh, and immediately, uh, it raises the uh, problem, how much catalyst do you use in a reaction? How many? Uh, moles, how many moles, how many uh, molecules of catalyst do you use? And the answer is most frequently, we are not quite sure, because we have put something in our reactor, but that something then has been transformed uh, from being a precursor or a catalytic material to the real can catalytic entity that does the work. And how many such entities there are is um, uh, <laughs> is one of the uh, most uh, difficult things to determine in catalytic science and technology. So we are uh, learning uh, uh, a lot of uh, simple ideas here. And uh, uh, now we are uh, ready to, to, uh, to see how this particular catalyst uh, will act as such. And uh, we are going to uh, abbreviate uh, this catalyst as an active site, which we will represent according to custom by an asterisk. Uh, and we need to include uh, this carbene. So that's now our, our catalyst. Ready to go. Uh, the asterisk is most convenient, a symbol, because it hides all our ignorance. Frequently, we don't know what it is, so. But it's there somewhere, and uh, it, it must be conserved. Uh, material balance in all that we do uh, should preserve the number of these uh, uh, entities. But is that a, a correct statement? Uh, yes, in principle, uh, we must have conservation of mass. But unfortunately, uh, uh, catalysts uh, don't last forever. They die after a while. And uh, uh, to uh, say that the uh, uh, number of catalytic species during a reaction remains constant or is not changed uh, as uh, is preserved, is recovered after the reaction, is a uh, optimistic statement. We hope that it is approximately correct. We hope that the candidate is going to live a long life, but uh, uh, we must uh, admit that the uh, uh, catalyst uh, will die one molecule at a time uh, while it performs a reaction. So uh, we uh, have uh, introduced a number of, of notions uh, here. Uh, a catalyst is submitted to some activation. A catalytic material is submitted to some activation. In this case, the inclusion of this carbene group in the catalytic material that you receive. And it will have a finite life. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's get uh, going for this particular uh, reaction now. And uh, we uh, uh, have the uh, uh, following. Uh, the uh, uh, first uh, molecule of reactant, the tagged one, 
will coordinate to the active site. And uh, that is the way any catalytic reaction uh, starts. And this coordination here, uh, and any other type of uh, first step, elementary step, that takes place. Uh, this first step is what uh, we'll call the entry step. We enter uh, uh, into the uh, sphere uh, of uh, uh, the uh, catalytic entity. Now, the uh, second step then will be some kind of, uh, of uh, rearrangement. And uh, presumably, uh, this rearrangement uh, will form some kind of uh, uh, so-called metalla cycle. Uh, see, when you use such uh, names, you demonstrate a profound knowledge of chemistry. So it's nice. Uh, it can impress a lot of people. So um, metalla cycle, what, what is it? Well, you have uh, your metallic uh, center here, and then you have CH2 and CH2 and CH2. Two tagged, one untagged, and it is some kind of cycle. Okay. A, uh, three carbons and a uh, central metal atom. And uh, then after that, we will have, so this, what has happened after the entry step is a rearrangement. Of course, these have names that are different depending on the chemistry, but n never mind. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, next uh, then will be that we have uh, a uh, CH2 attached here, and then CH2 uh, plus CH2, uh, I'm sorry, CH2, CH2, one tagged. And now we are ready uh, to uh, enter, this is another rearrangement, uh, one rearrangement, two. And now we are ready for the uh, final uh, step uh, of the first stage of uh, this catalytic uh, reaction. Uh, namely, uh, the uh, exit step. And uh, the exit step will uh, con uh, consist here uh, in the elimination of our first molecule of product, plus CH2, the mixed uh, olefin. All right. And then we are going to repeat, do it once more, and we will have carried out the uh, reaction that we wanted to carry out in the first place, this uh, dismutation of the uh, uh, olefin. And uh, what I have done piecemeal can be best represented uh, by a uh, by means of a, of a cycle. Good, it's very good. All right. Uh, what we have done is start with this catalytic entity. We have uh, an entry step, a first rearrangement, second rearrangement, uh, a uh, exit step, and we repeat and we convert uh, this uh, 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 molecule uh, plus this molecule into the two identical products that exit from the cycle. We uh, see that uh, a uh, catalytic phenomenon is a cycle. And uh, the meaning of the cycle is that when we are finished to go once around the clock, we have performed the reaction that we wanted, 
and we recover the uh, uh, catalytic entity that uh, starts the cycle to run five minutes before noon or midnight. So what is a, a catalyst? This is a substance, this one in particular, is involved in an uh, uninterrupted, uninterrupted closed uh, cycle of elementary steps. This one, this one, this one, they're all elementary steps. Reactants being added along the cycle to uh, the uh, uh, cycle and products being ejected from the uh, cycle so that we get back the uh, catalytic entity with which we started. Uh, simple, uh, isn't it? And I think perhaps a little bit more uh, understandable. In other words, uh, a catalyst is really defined by the way it, it, it works. And the central idea, it is a cyclic process, and it is uninterrupted. Uh, in principle, we could, uh, we could uh, carry out a number of these steps uh, in one reactor, and then transfer the product into another reactor and carry out the uh, other half of the steps. This would be a uh, two-stage process, would not be uh, uh, catalytic. It's all right. Uh, uh, there are such excellent processes that are two-stage processes, but they are not strictly uh, uh, catalytic. For instance, uh, Suppose you, you want, as uh, many people uh, like to do today, for uh, future energy needs, suppose you want to uh, oxidize uh, uh, methane to some molecule that uh, you then uh, can uh, transform into a liquid fuel. Uh, so to some products that ultimately go to liquid fuels. Uh, we'll talk about this uh, uh, at some time. There is uh, so much natural gas in this world and not so much oil left that ultimately we will be uh, uh, needing uh, this kind of, uh, of process. Uh, or at least we will have to find some intelligent way to use natural gas. Well. Uh, some people say, oh, I can do that. And uh, they, uh, uh, take a, uh, they take the natural gas, pass it uh, through a reactor, packed with a catalyst, solid catalyst. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this is an oxide catalyst. And uh, the uh, methane will uh, pick up uh, some of the oxygen and be oxidized. And uh, uh, after that, you uh, interrupt this, and you pass oxygen to your oxide that has been depleted from the oxygen, and you replenish the oxygen in the oxide. So you have a two-stage process. It is not a catalytic uh, process. But it could be acceptable. I mean, uh, and uh, uh, although more complicated to uh, use than a catalytic process.
So go, going back to the cycle, what is the uh, uh, first question that we, we ask uh, about uh, any catalytic cycle? Uh, the first question that, that we ask is at what uh, rate will it turn over? It turns over how many times per second, which is the uh, scientific unit of time, uh, or if you prefer, how many RPM uh, but, uh, per second, let's say. And uh, of course, that depends very much. You can have catalysts that uh, turn over very uh, slowly, perhaps uh, once per hour, or uh, catalysts that turn over very fast, like uh, 10 to the 6 times per second. Uh, catalysts that turn over that fast, not all of them by any uh, means, are enzymes, uh, naturally catalyst in the living cells. But in industrial practice, you note that uh, uh, the uh, turnover rate is neither too large nor too small. And uh, uh, it's in order of magnitude for many uh, processes, one turnover per second. Now, uh, suppose it be 10 to the 3 per second. Uh, what would uh, be uh, some limitation? Uh, for use of such a nice catalyst that would approach the uh, uh, turnover rate of an enzyme. Suppose it be 10 to the minus 3 per second. What would be the uh, limitation to uh, the use of a catalyst in actual practice? OK, let's now uh, say that this, in general, will be too fast, and this, in general, will be too slow, with due exceptions, of course. But I'm talking about a sort of a ballpark uh, estimate of useful, economic, uh, workable turnover rates of uh, a, any, any catalytic entity. Why would this be too fast? Any, uh, anybody can venture a, uh, an answer to that, to that question. I say never, never too fast, uh, but uh, we are going to meet uh, to hit a a, uh, a snag here, and we will not that way it won't work. Why? If it becomes too fast. Yes. Well, could you uh, uh, use your? See, there are people out out there uh, who are listening to you. The, the products get in the way? The what? Products get in the way of the incoming reactant? Uh, I think that you probably uh, 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 have one of the elements. If by that you mean that you, you have to eliminate, to uh, take the products away from the uh, catalytic side, uh, and by, for that matter, uh, you have to feed the catalytic side with reactants. Uh, so you have a transfer of mass, diffusion phenomena getting in the way. And this is a diffusion of mass and diffusion of heat. So these are the uh, 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 typical uh, problems of uh, catalytic reaction engineering. And why would then uh, be uh, on the other side of the window of opportunity, uh, why would uh, a turnover rate become too slow? Any uh, other good 
suggestion on, on that. I think I uh, uh, gave you a hint when, when I said economic opportunity. Hmm? Translate that into uh, some uh, more concrete way of uh, expression. Why is it that we would not make return on investment that we uh, would expect from this particular catalytic process? If it were too slow, I promise it's the last time I'll talk about money in this course. But <laughs> <coughs> well, if it's too slow, you will need a reactor of much too large a size. And uh, that, uh, the, for any process, there is a size that is uh, acceptable. And if you uh, have too large a reactor, uh, you will uh, have too large of a capital expenditure. It will be very difficult to break even and more difficult to make money. Please uh, then retain this uh, order of magnitude in mind. So, Kayak cycle, how many uh, 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 RPMs? Part 100 revolutions per minute, center of the uh, economic opportunity. What is the, uh, then the uh, other question that we ask uh, uh, immediately about a catalytic cycle? It's uh, the life. So the life means the number of turnovers. of the cycle before the catalyst uh, dies. Of old age, of disease, of poisoning, uh, of disintegration, whatever. That varies, again, a, a, a sum. And uh, uh, what is the, uh, the uh, strict minimum? the most tolerant person will accept for the life of a catalyst in terms of turnovers, yeah? One. Ah, that's not a catalyst. <laughs> Two. <laughs> if it turns over only one, you have a stoichiometric reaction, okay? But <laughs> two is, is the bare minimum, okay? Minimum. Ah. Uh, it's not a, 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 a bad question to ask, uh, because uh, uh, you will find many uh, uh, papers on catalysis in uh, learned uh, journals. Uh, and they talk about their catalyst, and my catalyst here, my catalyst there. And if you look around and uh, calculate how many turnovers uh, that catalyst has actually performed during the experiment reported in the paper, you will find much less than one. So it's, it's certainly, <laughs> it uh, remains to be demonstrated that you have to deal with a, with a catalyst. You have used perhaps what could be a catalyst, but you, have, you uh, have used it and badly as a reagent. The reagent has not been even exhausted when you decide to stop. Uh, how much? Well. 10 to the 3, yes. 10 to the 6, sometimes. 10 to the 9, yes. That exists. Uh, the uh, catalyst to make ammonia uh, will last so long that uh, the uh, plant 
client is turned off maybe after two or three years, not because the client list has died or is, uh, has become uh, inactivated in a noticeable way, but because the plant has to be stopped for cleaning to avoid explosions and uh, you, have, you have to, to uh, 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 stop the, uh, the process for a while but not because the candle is, is, is uh, has, has, has died. So there is a, a very large uh, range here of uh, catalyst lies that uh, we uh, have to uh, consider. The idea of uh, a, a catalytic uh, cycle is perhaps something uh, like, like this one here, any, any cycle, is something that uh, perhaps uh, uh, some of the pioneers in the field had in mind. But the uh, uh, representation of catalytic cycles, uh, may I uh, see it again? It's so pretty. Uh, uh, can, I, can I see it? Thank you. Uh, is uh, actually something relatively new. It's about 15 20 years old, and uh, uh, this uh, clock representation of the catalytic cycle actually is, uh, has been introduced about 15 years ago or so by a uh, industrial uh, chemist at DuPont by the name of Chad Tolman, and uh, it is used more and more uh, and uh, it uh, uh, is a very, very good way to think about, about, uh, about catalysis. Uh, immediately, you, you, uh, when you think about catalysis, you, you think about some kind of, uh, of uh, engine or a robot that uh, has a life of its own, not just like a chunk uh, of a solid that uh, participates in some manner uh, and, uh, and is uh, recovered unchanged at the end of the process. There is one, one interesting thing here on this uh, uh, cycle. Uh, which uh, you uh, see here, and it says here uh, plus five and zero and plus two and zero and plus five. This is half of the total cycle, and the second half is a repetition of the first half. And what what are uh, these uh, figures? Well, they they are the figures that uh, were calculated by uh, the uh, uh, people uh, who uh, proposed this cycle for uh, this mutation of olefins by this particular catalytic entity. And it is Goddard at Caltech and his student, uh, Rappe. And uh, they calculated uh, these uh, uh, numbers there, and what, what are these? This, this is the uh, standard free uh, uh, energy referred to uh, uh, arbitrary. Uh, actually, it uh, would be the, the uh, uh, standard uh, free energy of that species in the cycle. Uh, you see that uh, the entry step has a delta G0 standard uh, of minus 5, and the units are the old ones, kilocalorie per mole, as calculated. And that is uh, pretty much the norm that to enter into your uh, 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 catalyst you have a downhill process in uh, Gibbs free energy. Uh, or 
okay, so I'm downhill, and hey, wait a moment, now I'm going to go uphill. Uh, and then I go back downhill, because these are uh, essentially the same. And then I have to go uphill, a full five kilocalories per mole. Should I worry? Is there any law that uh, says that uh, uh, I cannot go uphill uh, spontaneously uh, for uh, a uh, chemical process? And by uphill, I mean when uh, this quantity here, when this quantity is positive. Am I uh, 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 supposed to declare, uh, uh, unfortunately, this beautiful cycle will not, not take place because of these up, uphill events? Well, uh, if it were true, I would not have shown you this beautiful cycle, of course. Now, this is the uh, standard uh, free energy. And nothing tells you that uh, uh, the standard free energy has to be negative uh, for a process to take place spontaneously. What is uh, absolutely, completely, totally ruled out is anything for which the free energy Gibbs free energy change is positive, won't take place. But if the uh, standard free energy uh, is positive, uh, you, can, you can move. You may not get very far because you will hit equilibrium. But you can uh, 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 hope that uh, you may get somewhere. Uh, and uh, you, you might say, well, Suppose that this process here takes place, takes place at what, 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, five kilocalories per mole uh, uphill is not really perhaps too bad. You will be limited by equilibrium, uh, but you will, you will go, and that's done. Uh, Actually, uh, people who perform uh, quantum mechanical calculations today for catalytic cycles, and their number is, is uh, uh, increasing rapidly. Uh, I've said, uh, beware if we uh, have a step for which the standard free energy is positive and too high. Uh, maybe you shouldn't start working in the lab. You are going to lose your money. And Oh boy, I, I, I've talked that long. Uh. Good morning. By way of an introduction, last Wednesday, we talked a lot about these catalytic cycles, the way <coughs> we think about them, and it will occupy us some more in the next few weeks. Uh, when we see a cycle the way uh, I showed you uh, last time, and uh, uh, what, what sort of uh, comparison we have, as I mentioned, uh, it's, a, uh, it's a kind of a nanometric scale engine, molecular sized engine. And it turns over at uh, 100 uh, RPM for a long, long time sometimes. And uh, uh, the uh, strokes in this uh, engine are the elementary steps that you see. And what's the fuel that keeps it going, this, uh, this engine? Nothing really moves spontaneously unless, unless something happens. 
It's a, it's a rather important concept. There is a uh, interesting uh, book that appeared a couple of years ago, and there is a new edition coming out. Uh, and the author is Eric Wexler, formerly from MIT. And uh, the title of the book is Engines of Creation. And it is a um, <clears throat> plea for the development of uh, what he and some other people call uh, nanometric uh, technology, or nanometric uh, technologies, as a matter of fact. And he, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what he's driving at, but he talks about uh, uh, molecular devices to replace, ultimately, the uh, uh, computers uh, as we know them today. And that's probably a good idea. There's something else that, uh, that he uh, talks about, which uh, worries me a little bit. He says, uh, chemists so far have been a little clumsy. And uh, uh, they do not really control well the uh, molecules they make. Uh, I think this is quite incorrect. But then he says, how are we going to do it in the future? And he says, we are going to build anything that we want uh, in the order, uh, ordered structure that we want, atom by atom. Uh, not molecule by molecule, but atom by atom. Uh, this is a little bit extreme, and I uh, suspect that the only way for that uh, uh, new chemical technology to uh, succeed is to hire an army of uh, Maxwell demands who will do that for you. Uh, it will cost a pretty penny in the fuel that drives uh, the uh, chemical reaction along the catalytic cycle. And that fuel is It's named after uh, the uh, most uh, important American scientist of the 19th century, late 19th century, uh, who uh, lived and worked at, uh, at Yale and uh, was recognized only after he died. That happens sometimes. His name is Gibbs. And so it's a Gibbs-free energy that uh, uh, drives the uh, uh, reaction. And when it's gone, the, re the uh, engine stops. The reaction is over. The Gibbs-free energy uh, driving the reaction is uh, equal to, to zero. Uh, I think it's important to uh, uh, be reminded of a very few, uh, very uh, uh, simple, very well-known uh, <coughs> thermodynamic principles here. And the reason is that we are going to see that in, uh, in kinetics, in kinetics of catalytic uh, cycles, thermodynamics plays a very important role. New, uh <coughs> are not in a totally different world when we get into kinetics. You uh, work uh, onward from the uh, basis of thermodynamics. And on the uh, first uh, uh, page of the notes that uh, uh, you uh, can get on the table on your uh, right-hand side, uh, and you probably better look at uh, at the, these notes rather than at, uh, at the screen. You will probably find it easier. And uh, we shall go uh, uh, very briefly to uh, uh, whatever is not evident or, uh, uh, or to trivial. The 
question of standard states will certainly uh, um, be one that uh, should retain our attention a couple of minutes. Uh, the uh, standard state in thermodynamics is uh, left to the arbitrary choice of uh, the uh, person facing a problem. Now, uh, in the gas phase, uh, one atmosphere, one bar, uh, at the moment still one atmosphere, is uh, the accepted uh, standard state that you uh, find in uh, tables. In the liquid phase, it's uh, one mole per uh, uh, liter, if you wish. Uh, <coughs> But in uh, uh, a lot of the work that we are going to do, we uh, will find it uh, much more convenient to take as uh, units of concentration molecules per a cubic centimeter in the uh, uh, fluid phase, and one molecule per square centimeter uh, at the uh, surface of a catalyst. And the standard state that is convenient uh, in uh, such uh, problems is one molecule per cubic centimeter and one molecule per square centimeter. I uh, uh, remind you that uh, any thermodynamic function
question of standard states will certainly uh, um, be one that uh, should retain our attention a couple of minutes. Uh, the uh, standard state in thermodynamics is uh, left to the arbitrary choice of uh, the uh, person facing a problem. Now, uh, in the gas phase, uh, one atmosphere, one bar, uh, at the moment still one atmosphere, is uh, the accepted uh, standard state that you uh, find in uh, tables. In the liquid phase, it's uh, one more per uh, uh, liter, if you wish. Uh, <coughs> But in uh, a lot of the work that we are going to do, we uh, will find it uh, much more convenient to take as uh, units of concentration molecules per a cubic centimeter in the uh, uh, fluid phase, and one molecule per square centimeter uh, at the uh, surface of a catalyst. And the standard state that is convenient uh, in uh, such uh, problems is one molecule per cubic centimeter and one molecule per square centimeter. I uh, uh, remind you that uh, any thermodynamic function 